Hey, we're live. I, I have a little bit of a delayed signal, so I was just getting to this here. Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, listen, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll, I'll kind of run through a few things here um, <clears throat> because people will start coming in. Um, but... I want to mention first. Okay, so everybody, thanks for thanks for showing up. This is this is this has been really fun. So this is the third time I've done this with Apogee, um, and I uh, I really love that company and I really love their products and um, yeah, and they've just been a blast to work with. So first off, I want to thank Apogee, uh, thank everybody over there, Bob, Betty, um, Marlene, Seb, uh, Cody, Sebastian. Uh, these guys are all awesome, and they've they're they're working super hard to make these things uh, available for you. So uh, thanks, Apogee. Appreciate you guys. Uh, miss seeing you guys. Um, looking forward to after this getting into the studio over there. Um, so. Before we start too, if you guys want to follow along on GarageBand on an iPad or an iPhone, any iOS device is fine. Um, grab grab that device now um, and open up GarageBand. And and as I go through things, you can you can somewhat follow along and and you know try some of the settings or whatnot. And today I'll be using so today I'll be using the Apogee Jam again. I did this on my first one, and I'll be putting some more guitars on the song that we have been working on for the last couple of weeks. And my goal and objective for this is to, for any of these, is to really like kind of give creative tools for you guys to use. You don't, I'm using GarageBand, you can apply these to any any software, but I really love GarageBand and I really love, I really love giving people tools to use that that they can use anytime really. like. With GarageBand being it's, a, it's free, it's super super powerful and amazing software. It it updates to it, it, it you know it's the little brother of Logic. So anything you do in here opens up in Logic and you can continue your creations in Logic. Um, but with these awesome Apogee iOS pro, uh, products, you can you can basically you can get to the point where you're recording in a hotel room or on a park bench or wherever and you can get high quality stuff. So if you're if you're sitting at the park with your phone and guitar and you happen to have a jam in your pocket and you got a great idea, it doesn't go to waste. So that's why I love talking about this stuff on a really simple level. Um so I want to I want to go over a little bit of what we did in the last couple. So I want to do a little bit of a recap to kind of see to show you guys where I'm at and what I'm thinking about. Um, and then I'm gonna add a couple more guitars to this and I did some really cool guitars today and I wanna show you how I did them um, over this B section that we made <clears throat> last time. So let's, let's, um, let's go over what we did. So for those of you who are new, I started this session blank on, the, on, on, on my first live stream. Um, what I did was I started off with 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 the drummer and and I put in I just put in a simple drum beat and this is from this is from uh, Garage Band's Smart Instruments. So drummer is one of their smart instruments and by far my favorite smart instrument. I think it's so cool. So I just put in a simple drum beat because I wanted to have something to play along to um, before I start. This might get changed, it might not, but it's cool and it works great for now. After that, I had a great guitar riff and I put two of them in and I did them stereo left and right. So we added these guitars. For you musicians out there, the chords are, this is A minor seven, first one's D minor seven, to D minor, to D minor nine, to C major seven, to G major seven. So that's the progression we're working with today. After that, we added a percussion instrument, and this is another drummer instrument from GarageBand. These are awesome. So when you when you have like sections where you just gotta add something, you gotta add some percussion. This is this is the greatest. And there's a bunch of different drummers you can choose from to go there. So I just added a little percussion to it. This is a bit how I work, really. So the like as I'm building a track, 
I'll just kind of add things like this. I'll go, oh, I know I need some percussion at some point. It might not be right now, but maybe, you know, I'm going to need some probably. So I put it in there. We can start subtracting as we go. Um, from there, I put in a little bit of a really trippy, like ambient guitar using this endless ambient patch. Um, that can come in and out too, and you can use that for arrangement um, to build sections. We opened up another smart instrument, which was the bass. And you can see on the smart instruments, they're really cool. You can see that all I did was I picked, I think Liverpool is the first bass it opens up with, and I put, to, I put it to auto play, and I just simply hit the chord strips, and it automatically plays a pattern. So this was super cool. This is great for creating. This is great for practicing. Um, and it might be a bass line that stays, who knows? But it's there, it, it's super quick, and it sounds great. So just FYI, that Liverpool bass is the bass that Pharrell used on Happy. So it's legit. Like these are great sounds that, that Logic and GarageBand make. Um, from there, we added another smart instrument, the, the Rhodes Piano. Again, chord strips. I didn't use autoplay, I just used the chord strips to play in the chords. So that was our section A. Okay, let's let's uh, let's pull these solos off and, and hear what this sounds like. So we made we we made a first section in GarageBand, just an eight bar loop, an eight bar jam. And this is typically how we would want to start like a song idea <clears throat> if we were getting like somebody in to write a melody and lyric to it. Um, just to have like something nice and simple that they can use, use to get like their ideas across. So from here, from here we went to another section and I was like, then I started to kind of think, okay, what, what else could I do here? What else would I want to maybe do here? Or what else would I do if somebody sent this to me and said, hey, I need some guitars. I'm at the beginning of an idea. I don't know exactly where it's going to go yet. I like this chord progression, but I'm going to, I'm looking for the vibe right now, right? So what I did was I went to, a, I went to section B and, and GarageBand works in these song sections, right? They default to eight bars. So I just kept it at eight bars. You can make them longer later or whatever and they usually usually this stuff auto loops in, in there it's a really smart program so we went to section b and we sorry actually we we extended we we made that first section let me make let me make sure we made that first section 16 bars and then we made we doubled it and then we put in this b section okay and what we did here was we took out the guitars the first electric guitars i did we kept the percussion in there, we kept that ambience, we kept the electric pianos in there, and we started adding some acoustics. So this is what this sounds like here. This is what we did last week with the hype mic and an acoustic guitar. So there I was just, I was just adding, acoustic guitars and we were going for a kind of that wall of sound thing, right? So what did we do? We took and we bought, we got one acoustic, we got, we found our main acoustic part. That one should be, I usually pan these left and right. Sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Is that coming out the left? We doubled it. So there's our straight basic acoustic part, okay? Right? Okay, we added two more acoustics on top of that. Same chords, what I did this time was I just used a capo and I played them up, up on the capo area, right? So. just to kind of get that big wall of sound thing. I know there's a lot of like the same notes going on in there, but I love that wall of sound thing. I, I have a soft heart for that. Um, 
So I just wanted to get that kind of big, lushy kind of thing, you know, the George Harrison kind of thing on his solo ac records. And then we did some diamonds. We call them diamonds. That's, I don't know, people I'm sure call them different things, but it's diamonds because it, it's the diamond is what you use in a real book chart where you just hit one note and it goes for the whole bar. Okay, so it's like two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we call those diamonds. That's how I grew up uh, calling them. I think I think that's a real book thing. Somebody could correct me. Uh, maybe somebody correct me on on, on on the comments if you can. Oh, and remember, please, you guys, comment too. I get I get the comments just a little bit late, but please comment. I'll try to I'll try to respond to as much as I can too. And if anything's confusing, no questions out, man. Like, ask whatever. I'm I'm happy to to answer whatever. Um, okay, so here's that here's that B section. These should be split left and right too. So I usually do that, just split the guitars left and right. All right. Okay, so there's our two. So what would happen then i started to put myself in the scenario too and this this scenario i'm in a lot right somebody sends me this idea i have this i need guitars i don't know where i'm gonna go i'm just layering up stuff right they came to me because they want a sound that i do or they've heard stuff that i do and i'm gonna just give my all and get get give them enough tools in their creative toolkit I, you'll hear me use that a lot i like i like the thought of for me creating, always feeling like, how can I fill my creative toolkit, right? So there's many different ways you can do that. So in this case, I wanna fill the creative toolkit of the producer that sent this to me, right? So I'm gonna add a couple more guitars. So I'm pretending like the, the producer said, listen, B section is really good. I want something in there that's kind of aggressive, something that's got like a, that gives a little energy in the background, maybe a little solo-y kind of thing. Do you have any ideas? So this is what I came up with. I added these three guitars and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do the cooking show thing again. So I'm gonna show you what I did and then we're gonna re recreate these guitars, cool? So let's hear what that sounds like. These, I added these guitars. So those guitars alone are. Now, I think that's pretty cool. Cause this is, that's something that any producer could use. Like who knows, that might be an intro. That might be an ending. That might be something that they use in between sections. It's just something that works with the track that gives a lot of like ambient uh, energy, right? And it's distorted. So it has a, it has a, like a, 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 a like a grittiness, it has like a, um, it gives us some bite, right? Um, so let's go through and I'll show you what I did to make these parts. So, I, here, let me, let me, let me, let me see how we're gonna do this here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and make, so I'm on, I'm on, if you guys can see up in the, up in the corner there, I am on, on song section C. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this and put it at the end. Boom, and then we're gonna go out and then we're back here. So let me go and do this. I'm gonna mute these original ones that I did, okay? And we're gonna start over, we're gonna add these guitars back in. And I'm gonna show you how I'd set up the Jam Plus with these two. Because we're doing like a bunch of ambient stuff on this, I won't be using the Jam Plus in, in direct mode, which is what I typically do. Um, I'm gonna turn off direct mode when I do this because I really wanna know what that ambient thing is doing and I don't wanna hear a clean sound when I'm doing this. So, um, <clears throat> we're turning off those. Let's, let's, let's start this up first, actually. I would change guitars on a part like this because I know it's distorted, I would go, because it's distorted, I would go to a humbucker guitar. So, I will grab my Tele Gib and Get that guy in there. So 
Now we're new guitar added. Okay. So we'll start by adding a new track. So to add a new track, you just go down to the plus button down here in GarageBand, hit the plus button, and we're going to scroll over to, we're going to scroll over to, sorry, one second, to Amplifier, and let's just grab Distorted right off the bat. Cool. And I actually, I actually want to see, what did I use on that other one? Big Sustain. I thought that was a really cool patch. So... So we're not hearing input monitoring right now. Right now, with the Apogee Jam, we're only hearing the direct signal. We're not hearing... This is all... You're hearing a bit of my room mic too. So that's just direct signal that you're hearing right into there. Apogee Jam is awesome that it has that feature and you can see even when you, you can hear it with, with my room mic that there's, there's no latency. And this is the thing, this is, this is my favorite thing about the Jam Plus that I can get in there and just. I can get in there and just not be worrying about things coming back late and I can be right on the pocket if I need to. But today we're going to be doing some ambient guitars and I really need to hear the amp. So I have a new guitar plugged in. This one's hotter because it is um, a humbucker guitar. So first I'm going to set my levels, which seem to look pretty good on there. I'll use the rotary knob and just take it back. I'm, I'm pretty good level right there. That's the first thing I'm going to do when I'm using the jam plus set the level. Now I'm going to turn off direct mode and I turn off direct mode by pressing this middle button right here. Now you're again only here in my you're only hearing the guitar in my room mic which is right above you here or right above me. Um, only here in the room mic so I can't record at this point I can't I won't hear my I mean if I had the room mic I'm not hearing myself okay so we got to go over to input monitoring and turn on input monitoring now now we hear the amp okay it's a really, really kind of... It's a really kind of distorted, like, big sound. But that's kind of what I was looking for. Now, what I was using on this track, what I, what I used to get that kind of that sound, that eerie kind of distorted sound, I used an Ebo. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with an Ebo, but I, I use this all the time. And this thing just vibrates the string. It's like a sustainer, I think, which I've never used. I think Steve Vai has those in his guitar. And there's guitars made with them that kind of automatically have these things pretty much built in. I don't have one of those. So I'm going to just use my Ebo today. So when I'm thinking about a part like this, I'll get my settings set up. I can hear myself. Sound is cool. I'm not going to mess with that. I can mess with that sound later. Um, <clears throat> And, and uh, I feel good about it. I'm ready to record. Let's see where we're at here. So yeah. So if I go and just press record, I could play this part. But first, let me make sure I remember it. I'm going to get back over to my amp. I can't hear it unless I'm in, unless I'm in this mode, unless I'm in that screen. So, so let's practice the part. Let me go back and practice this here. Let me, let me record it. Part number one.
Cool. So I got the first part in. Let's see what that sounds like. Let's go back here. There's the part. So that's cool. Now, with this kind of part, I want even more verb, I want even more delay. So I would just go into my track settings um, and I would just turn a little bit of... And the reason I would adjust this here because I'm gonna use, I'm gonna, to make this easy to get a new app, I'm gonna just hit duplicate. So if I get this sound in place, then when I double it, I don't have to go back in and try to match these. You guys have seen me, if, you've, if you guys have been here for the last couple, you'll notice that I like to do a lot of stereo guitars, right? Um, especially for parts like this. Um, so, I'll first, I'll go ahead and I'll pan that one all the way to the left. Let me press stop. And then I'll go over here and I'll duplicate that track. Now I'm on this one, I'll pan this one all the way to the right. And let's turn off that. And I'll go up here. Ah, I gotta, I gotta unsolo it before I do this other track. Okay, so now I want to double that track. So, those of you who are in headphones will hear that like other ones on my on my right side now. So we'll just go for a double. Um, I'm going to show you this other trick right after this on the second track. But um, let let me let me just get this one here. So let's get this track doubled here again with the ebo, same exact part. Cool. So that's cool. That's good. Let's see what those two sound like together. I'll go ahead and solo them. Go back. Cool, right? So pretty cool part. Let's hear it. Let's hear it in the whole track. Okay, so now for me, I feel like I want to add one other note in there. And the other note I added was, and I'm going to play this one solo for you. I think this is the one. Let's see. Yeah. I need to figure it out really quick. That's the next part. Okay, and you'll notice it's a little trippy. I'm gonna show you what I did afterwards to make it sound really warped out like that, which I think is super cool. So, but before I do that, let's let's go ahead and let's make a new track, okay? This one, let's go back into track settings. I wanna put that in the center. And I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit because I can't hear myself too well when I'm recording that part. So, um, Another trick, and I haven't used this a lot in GarageBand, but it's really awesome. And I used it the I've been using it just for the last week or so. But in track settings and recording, if you go in, you can change you can change it to be to multi multi track uh, multi take record. <clears throat> so with multi take recording on, what's good about doing a part like this and having multi take is that. When you're using an ebo, typically an ebo is kind of squirrely, right? It's a, it's a, it, just hitting the notes in this with an ebo. Sometimes it can kind of gank out, or if you just barely touch a string, it'll, it'll get like, it'll, it'll, it'll just cut off, you know. So multi take is kind of good. 
to use because you can just play it if you screw up the first time. You can just play it a couple more times and cut and put the other part in. So I'm gonna use multi-take on this one. Hopefully I get in the first take. If not, we'll I'll do it again. I'll run it again and then we will we'll try to cut it up. So let me show you how I do that. That's cool. So let's see what we got here. So at this point, I probably have two takes. I should oh, showing three takes on there because I just played a little bit of the last one. So that will just play like, and that's it. But if you go over here, tap this. Oops. If you go over here and tap this and tap on takes, you can start to select the takes. Now on take one, I did kind of beef a little bit on uh, one of those changes. Let's see. So a little beef there, right? Um, so what I can do, let me see where, uh, let's, let's see, it's about right at 53. So let me try this one. So I'm gonna go in, go ahead and go in here. I'm gonna tap the, tap the region. So I have to double tap, double tap the region and I'm gonna hit split. Little scissors shows up in the bottom there. I could just, Swipe that down, and now you see a one on the region and another one on the region over there. I'm gonna grab the second take from this one. So if I tap it, go into takes, and then I go into number two. Now I'm playing with the start of number one and going into number two. Let's see what that sounds like. So that's cool. There's a little hit right in there. It probably won't even be able to hear it, but let's let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, you can't you can't even hear the the edit. All right. So that's that's great, right? So at this point, I decided that I want that to be a little bit trippier sounding. So here's one of the tricks I do, and you can do this in any DAW, obviously, but this is kind of fun to do with guitars, especially with a distorted guitar like this, because it gets really kind of gritty sounding, um, doesn't, and it starts to not even sound like a guitar. But so what you do is you can go into settings on the region, right? If you select this thing called follow tempo and pitch, then you get a transposition button, which is really cool. Transcribe, transpose that an octave up. And let's do the same thing with the next one here. So we'll go into settings. We're gonna do follow tempo and pitch. And let's bump that up an octave. And let's go back and hit listen. Like to me, that's super cool. I love, I love sounds like that. So hearing that in there. All together. Cool. So hey Brett, I saw I saw Brett, Brett asked what was the name of the sustain tool. So it's a really popular. This is called uh oh, like the dyslexic with the camera. Um, this is called an Ebo. It's got a little blue light when you turn it on and you, you can see where you set it in between the strings. So the way this works, and there's a couple, honestly, there's a, there's, it, it picks different harmonics or something like that when you switch it from, there's two ons on it. So this one I was just using, I switched it over, because when you're looking at it this way, I switched it over to the left and that's what got me that. Thank you. 
you know it's really such a cool tool um very common i'll use that for people to just so producers can have like again i can fill their creative toolkit and they can have like different fun things to pull in and out that'll work over the track <clears throat> so yeah um so let's see where we're at here so now let's let's see let's see how let's let, let's let's actually take a listen and see how it goes from let's go 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 over to all sections and let's see how that goes from the our first section into the second section okay let's go back here Okay, it's cool. A little abrupt though. And one thing I didn't review that we did last time is some of these reverse things with the acoustic guitar. So why don't we do this? Let me take these three that I just did, okay? So I'm gonna select these three, tap them, hold copy. I'll take the cursor and pull it over to this is another section that has this the same acoustic breakdown section. We just did it in, we remember we duplicated our main, one of these sections and, and then did this on the, on the back end of the song. But now if we do this and then I go ahead and press paste, it'll paste it right in there. Now this will probably be a little nicer. Let's go from section. So this is section B into the next section. So this is, sorry, I should say this is the A section and then it's going into our B section. And what we did here was we did a couple dropouts and then yet last time I showed you guys how to take and slice something up and you can reverse it again in settings. So these, these slices right here that you see at the very bottom, those are acoustics reversed right before. A really great trick, right? So it's just the last chord of the progression, so that would be the G, is reversed, and then it gives you a nice little swell into the song. There's other ways to do that, but that's a, that's a really great way to do that. Um, and then I do some drops before that too, and we'll talk about that, but let's listen to how that goes. So from our A section into our acoustic B section with the new guitars. That feels a little bit better. Now I might even do like, sometimes when you're getting something together for somebody to sing on, you don't wanna spend a lot of time. Like my gut is, is you get the foundation done right, okay? So you don't wanna spend a lot of time making drops and things like that. But some of the drops that are pretty obvious, you can make, cause it might inspire the singer when they're in the booth getting melody ideas, right? So you can see right before I hit our new section, the acoustic section, you can see that I did, I cut the drums out for a bar. The roads and the bass is still playing, but I think we could maybe take and cut the roads and bass out. Let's see what that sounds like. This would be something I would try. that got glitched there. Oh, I accidentally moved the Liverpool bass. Sorry about that, guys. I accidentally moved those. Let me try that one more time. I gotta move the end of it. Okay, there we are. So now we just got the guitars on that bar before and then the reverse, the, the main guitars that I did, the electric guitars and the reverse guitar. So it breaks down even a little bit more. So even better, right? These are really simple things. These are just really simple things. I'll never forget 
never forget going to Virginia Beach and sitting with Chad Hugo with a couple couple songs I had and it was a major lesson because what he started to do was really just kind of simplify things and put in drops and mutes and and just make things have their moment right so this is a great section this is great for just having a little bit of a moment here feels much better to me yeah so yeah that's 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 kind of my tricks for the today i'm watching i'm watching the comments if anybody has any if anybody has any other comments or any questions about what i'm doing i think i forgot to mention about the free jam plus giveaway sorry you guys all right so um yeah uh apogee's giving a jam plus away so they will um there's a link in the description i think you have to put your name in um and they are going to i'm sorry i, I totally forgotten the, the guys from apogee will write me and tell me here in a second um how this will work for uh for getting getting the winner um so i'm gonna look at my text to see if they did anyways um yeah uh what did what did he, what did he say something Cool. So, oh, okay. Alan, Alan asked, what are some suggested EQ tips when stacking guitars? Okay. That's a great question, Alan. <clears throat> All right. So one of the things I will do, first thing I will do, and this applies to everything in the mix. Okay. If you don't need low end, kill it. It doesn't need to be there. You'll be surprised if you're sitting in some really good headphones or at a great a tuned, a tuned room, great speakers, you'll be surprised at how much low end builds up in tracks. And the, the dance and the EDM guys seem to be great at this. They just, I, when I talk to EDM guys, when they talk about mixing, they, they shape, like they, they get rid of stuff. So I would, Alan, I would look at, let's, let's go into Let's go into, let's go into the section C. Give me a second here. Let's go to the acoustic guitar. Ah, what am I doing? I can just go to track settings. So this first acoustic guitar, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this right in the center here. It's actually, it really sounds good. Um, that was just recorded with the hype mic and I believe I used compression number one with the hype mic So the hype mic has a compressor built in which is genius um, But that was that's untreated at this point um, I would first thing I would do You got a visual EQ in here, right? The first thing I would do is kill all that low end. And I wouldn't do it like that I think I would do this. Hold on one second. Let me get back there. One second. That's the first thing I would start to do. I gotta figure out where the cut is on this. There should be a, there should be a high pass cut, um, which I don't know where it is on this one. I might shine them up a little bit. So yeah, Alan, that's that. That's like that's that. That's the first thing I would do to every one of these guitars. I would get in there and just start to. Sorry, that was the, that one from before. So trick number one, right? One thing I one thing I'm kind of like something to make the guitars really stand out is is getting into that like two to four K range then too. So for an electric guitar, let's get to let's say let's get to this 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 uh, Ebo guitar really quick and let me solo that. I turn these other guys off. So this Ebo guitar. So let's go in the visual EQ again. Those, I mean, 
In all honesty, I might make those really small because there's so much guitar doing stuff in there. But yeah, big for me is, is to really get rid of things I don't need. And then if I want it to stick out, I'm gonna try to find whatever is the right frequency. For these, I kind of want them to sit in the back, so I really wouldn't try to like find something that's, I'd probably leave that a fairly flat. But for guitars, for getting stacked guitars to sit in there, um, <clears throat> if I stack things and I really want them to like kind of be present, I might take the ones on the left and the right. I might I might not EQ those quite as as hard. If I'm stacking and I got one in the center, I might I might leave the one in the center a little bit more aggressive in the EQ. I might add a little bit more of the mid range in that two to four kind of range. Um, but yeah, that's that's typically my thing. Seriously ditching out those frequencies you don't need the the bass and then also when you're eqing try to try to avoid not just bumping everything up all the time try to try to find the things that you don't like it's as simple as that like you listen to it how do i want this guitar to sound and if there's a frequency in there that's bugging you like nice thing is you got these analyzers on in Logic and in GarageBand. So you can kind of see what's coming through on the frequency. And sometimes you'll be like, oh yeah, that frequency right there, I really want to get rid of. So you might want to come over here and just get rid of it. And the great thing about the analyzer is you see it there. Cool. Go to guitar exercises when practicing. Okay, so go to exercise. Here's what I've been doing, honestly, and I've I would have done this like this when I was younger, I believe. My go-to guitar exercises are to put on a drum machine, and I'll show you how I do it. I'll put on a drum machine. So what I'll do is I'll go over to the beat sequencer. I probably passed it. <laughs> Here's the beat sequencer. So I'll go ahead and put on the beat sequencer. Let me let me solo this. And I'll go to the beat sequencer. I don't know if you guys know much about the beat sequencer, but it is a great, another great garage band tool, and it's a great practicing tool. Um, if you press run, if you press power on the beat sequencer, it starts playing without the track. So it kind of works in its own area here. A lot of times I'll just practicing that kick. I'm gonna grab a different kick without like. Practicing for me, simply, you know, you know, I'll do those for warm ups. That's pretty fast to start a warm up on. Um, but a lot of times, I will start my warm up on with the beat sequencer, and I could, I could actually, I'll take the tempo, I'll take the tempo down quite a bit literally down to like maybe like 90 right so and i might just start to that's my warm-up exercise just to get me warm And I got so much. It's 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 hard it's hard to answer this one in one sitting. But maybe this will this maybe I'll maybe I'll attack this one at my next my next um my next Apogee live event because there's there's much more things there's a lot more things I would do with this um, drum machine wise. Now that's gonna be goofy, but like I, I I'll set up a beat sequencer. But a lot of times a lot of times I'll also I'll also set up just a um, an instrument. In GarageBand, and then I will go ahead and um, and practice over it. So I'll set up a smart instrument. But that's really good, though, uh, Leonardo. That, I'm glad you asked that because that gives me ideas for because I could I could definitely do a half hour hour on that easily next time. So I'll pick that up next time. But beat sequencer, I highly highly suggest whenever you're practicing whatever you're practicing, 
have something like, well, metronome's cool, right? But I think the beat sequencer is better because you can actually have just a little bit of a beat and you can practice playing inside of that. So I'll go, I'll go through more of that the next time. So, so cool. Any other questions? Apogee, have you guys, have you guys all signed up for the microphone? I'm trying to, I'm trying to see if there's any others. Uh, no, I think that's it. Cool. Is there a way? As in hands free. I don't know if there's a way. Uh, uh, I think uh, D Dan asked. Um, ask and ask. Uh, do you follow a strict order of steps during recording? What is the most important uh, for uh, for you to set up first? Do I follow strict order of steps? No. You know. Um, <clears throat> I don't like I actually watched Oak. I want to watch the rest of this Oak interview. Uh he did um a Demi Lovato song. It's just an incredible producer and he he said he doesn't he doesn't start with a template. Um I don't start with a template either. I I I don't have a um I don't have an order. I don't. Um and I think that there's so many cool tools nowadays that I leave it open for other tools to to like give me some inspiration. So for instance, that's why that's why I push GarageBand for for people so much to practice and get creative in because it's really set up. GarageBand and Logic are really set up to be creative. Like it's, it's they're it's they're great creative tools. Something like Pro Tools is set up to be a tape machine. It's to to get instruments and creative and Pro Tools takes you five times the amount of time as Logic in my eyes. You know, so I I leave it open. Garage Logic and GarageBand both have smart instruments. They have beat sequencers. They have, you know, a bunch of great patches that are already set up and ready to go. So I leave it. I leave it open. I open up Logic. I open up GarageBand. I open up a smart instrument and I just start going. Period. So, um, and they're asking. Okay, you guys found the links to sign up, but I think. I think that's kind of it. Unless there's another question, I'll probably close it up. Um, anybody, Apogee, tell me, tell me what you got for me on this next part. And everybody, oh, remind you too, everybody, please subscribe to Apogee's page. Please like this. Um, and uh, also, if you can too, I'm on Instagram. You can follow me at, at Brent Paschke. The all the stuff is in the description. I'm going to be doing some more courses on my YouTube, so I have my YouTube channel in the description. There's nothing on there now, but I'm going to be putting some stuff up. And I love sharing this stuff. I love sharing like the kind of techniques I've learned over the years. Um, yeah, so follow me there, like. Follow me on Instagram and I will keep you posted with all this along with all the Apogee stuff. And I use I use this jam, the jam and the hype mic. I use a lot of their iOS stuff a lot. Um, so you'll see a lot more of that on my page too. So make sure to make sure to check that um, in the description below, right? I see everybody check, click, click the like, <laughs> subscribe, check the description below. So yeah. Um cool. You guys, I think I think we're I think we're good. I got these three. Let's let me let me just recap it, and I'll see if another question comes in. So I'm gonna just recap what I did here on these on these um, guitars. Ah, uh, but let me see if I can undo enough to get back to where I was, <laughs> tempo wise and stuff. I can't even remember. Let's see. It was I. Uh, yeah, there we are. So what do we do? We we added. We added these three guitars. We use the big sustain amp. We use the same amp for the for all three guitars. We went into the track settings. We added a little echo and reverb just to get them way and way in the back. In fact, I'd probably pull them way back in the mix. <clears throat> so I just want that big swirly kind of. I want a wash of sound for these parts. Um, and then we, we added a double to that. So you hear the, these two, 
Yep. And then we added a harmony guitar on top of that. And remember in this harmony guitar, we set up to do multi-take recording. Oh, I'm on the other one. Yeah, so the harmony guitar, remember we did the multi-takes. There it is. We did the multi-takes. I think that's my first one, actually, sorry. But we did the multi-takes on that one, and then um, and we chose between them. So there's a couple tricks for you guys. I hope that helps. Listen, you can apply these anywhere. It doesn't matter what DAW. Um, any of these things, remember some of those tricks, the stereo guitars. Uh, we talked about EQing a little bit. Um, Remember, first thing for EQing, try to cut. Try to find those frequencies that you don't like in the guitar and pull those out. Um, you don't need that low end. Just cut that low end out. You don't want that rumbling against the, the bass. Keep keep that all, keep it all really clean. Um, and then we, we went through pitching the guitars up, which is really fun to do. Um, so you can always take your guitars, pitch them up. And then if you're working in something like GarageBand or Logic obviously has this, um, most recording softwares do this where it does the multi-take, you know, um, you can do that too. Um, I see one more question here. He asks, uh, Hugh asks, do you recommend using pedals in front of the jam or use, using the, uh, the box guitar effects? So, um, I, I, I like pedals. Um, I, I, I guess I have, a, I have a pretty good amount of them. My, my pedal rack is sitting back there. I use them in front, Hugh. Um, I think there's so many great pedals. Um, there's obviously good, there's obviously good stuff in here, but honestly, like this is great. You can make a record with this. I've used mini software guitars on record. I've used Kempers on record. Um, nothing like real stuff though. Um, so and that's that's part of my thing about why I really like the Apogee Jam is because it's so it's got such a it sounds weird but it's got an a, like an analog feel to it like and maybe that's because there's no latency in in the direct mode and it also sounds really good it's just like it's a good sounding direct in guitar device to me so short short answer rec I recommend using pedals or uh, real pedals if you if you can and. Apogee, we've actually talked about that. Maybe I'll, I'll integrate that into one of these two and try some different pedals um, using the Jam Plus. Um, but please, you guys, also write them, write me, tell me what you guys want me to talk about, and I'm happy to I'm happy to bring up and and make you know do some more live events where you know I address some of those things. So awesome. Well, thanks, guys. I think I think that's it for now. Um, we will see you. I don't know when the next one is. I think Apogee will put Apogee will obviously email everybody. Again, make sure to make sure to check me out on Instagram. Uh, ch subscribe to make sure to subscribe to Apogee's YouTube page. You can subscribe to my page. Please like these videos. Come back. Um, say hi to the guys from Apogee, um, and we will see you. Um, I think it's next week or the week after. They'll tell you when it is, and they'll tell me when it is, which is important. Yeah. So anyways, we'll see you guys. Thanks for showing up. Appreciate it. Stay safe. Take care.